Welcome back to this special focus on Forbes Africa's top 25 listed companies. Before the break, we looked at the history of West African stock exchanges and the importance of acknowledging and celebrating their growth and the companies that are responsible for it. The 25 top listed companies comprises of businesses from across the West African region with a noteworthy number being found in Nigeria. Each of these was selected according to strict criteria namely net income, asset wealth and market capitalization. Within the top five alone, the dynamism of the region's listed industries is evident. Nigerian Breweries was incorporated in 1946 and started operation in Nigeria in 1949 when their first bottle of Star rolled off their bottling lines in Lagos. You know, I said we are part of the Heineken Group. And being a part of an international group, it also helps us to, to operate from the stock market. And that is one of the reasons we joined the stock market. Of course, it also broadened our ownership base in terms of financing and all that. It was um, quite good. And we also want to use that to help our own corporate governance processes. Because we believe that the listing in the stock exchange will help us to know what to do at every point in time in terms of issues of um, corporate governance. Yeah, I think, um, again, listing on the exchange helps to diversify the ownership. Because one of the challenges with small businesses, especially in Nigeria and Africa by extension, is this family ownership. And if anything happens to the owner or promoters of a particular business, it tends to fizzle out. But when you are listed, you broaden your ownership structure, you broaden your, your operational uh, base, and it helps you to be a lot more sustainable. <laughs> Today, Zenith Bank is 22 years old, having been incorporated in May 1990. They are currently one of the biggest banks in Nigeria, with a shareholder base of over 1 million. We got listed in the Nigerian Stock Exchange in um, October 2004. It was a very successful IPO, uh, certainly one of the most successful. The offer was heavily oversubscribed. And um, we are happy that we got listed. It gave us the prominence, it gave us the exposure, it gave us the liquidity that um, we always wanted. And um, being part of uh, the Forbes listing is also something we think will help project the image of Zenith Bank, not only in Nigeria, not only in the West African sub-region, but in the world at large, because we intend to build a global brand ultimately. Essentially, it gives them that exposure. Um, it also ensures that they um, operate with best practices. Um, they, are, they are better regulated. When you have more shareholders, you have more people asking questions. And you know, that puts you on your toes as um, somebody running a business. So essentially it benefits both those running the business and those who own the business. The Dangote Cement Company was established in May 1981 as a trading business with an initial focus on cement. It currently has projects and operations in Nigeria, Benin and Ghana, with total existing production and import capacity of 14 million tonnes per annum. There came a point of time when we thought that, okay, we have to understand the real value of what we have invested. So that is what pushed us to the stock exchange. And uh, we listed in the stock exchange and you know the history. And in, in fact, we have to, to comply with the regulations, we have to even invest more, uh, we have to list, uh, put out more shares into the market, but the, the depth of the market is a bit limited, so that is one of the reasons why we are thinking of taking to the London Stock Exchange. Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, or ETI, a public limited liability company, was established as a bank holding company in 1985. Today, Ecobank is the leading Pan-African bank with operations in 32 countries across the continent, more than any other bank in the world. So at some point in time, uh, the members will want to trade their shares. So it was over-the-counter trading that was going on. And um, after, after some early years, the company started paying dividends. But members always felt that we needed a transparent way to value our investments. And in uh, actually on September 11, 2006, uh, we listed in the Nigerian Stock Exchange. That way, uh, the first time the company went public and there was 
open, transparent valuation of his shares, and members could then sell his shares. So it became more visible, so people can participate. The membership started expanding, and it gave the platform for which we now launch an IPO. First of all, it gives the company visibility. It gives the company a sense of uh, indigenization, in the sense that local investors can participate. We actually have a policy that in any country where we do, we want local participation. So listing gives that platform for everybody to participate, not just the informed, even the small investors who want to buy a share of the bank can do that. And uh, so that's the first advantage of listing. Second, it also showcases the bank when the bank tends to publish its results and, and, and display what it's doing in the annual general meetings to let the investors know where the bank is. So I think listing has all those positive things to give the bank visibility and let people have a sense of ownership of that bank. United Bank for Africa dates back to 1948. Today's UBA is the product of the merger of Nigeria's third and fifth largest banks, namely the old UBA and the erstwhile Standard Trust Bank, and a subsequent acquisition of Continental Trust Bank Limited. The union emerged as the first successful corporate combination in the history of Nigerian banking. I mean, um, joining the Nigerian Stock Exchange or joining a stock exchange for a company, you know, comes with a lot of um, you know, responsibilities. It comes with a lot of, um, you know, it's, I mean, typically, why would companies, you know, join stock exchanges? You know, because it, you would have to up your corporate governance, you know, policies. Um, your ability to access the market is further, you know, enhanced. And for institutions, really, that are that want to exist in perpetuity, the stock exchange is where to be. So as, you know, I, when we did the IPO, we sort of opened the ownership structure of the company. It was a natural thing to go, you know, to the stock exchange. So, so being listed on the stock exchange, you know, um, it was, was, was um, you know, very important, you know, to us. And, and you see the way we've evolved and grown from a Nigerian financial services institution to an African financial services institution. Um, we may not have been able to do that without you know, being listed on, on the stock exchange. So it was very important for, you know, for our strategy. The winning company this year was Dangote Cement, who topped the list with a market cap of over $12 billion. The Nigerian Stock Exchange also chose to recognize West Africa's top listed company by giving them the honor of ringing the bell. I want to start first of all by thanking the organizers of this event for inviting me on behalf of Dangote Simmons to this prestigious event which celebrates the top listed companies in West Africa. I'm delighted that this event is coming at a time that Africa is grabbing the global attention as one of the fastest growing regions of the world. This has gone a long way in changing the negative perception that the international community has been having about this continent. I'm also happy to note that all of us here tonight have contributed largely to the silent economic revolution that is sweeping across this continent. We are, to, uh, we are really humbled that we are being recognized, our efforts have been recognized, and it will also help us to drive us, ourselves ahead. As you know, we are expanding in 14 other countries, and we believe that this uh, uh, type of recognition is also going to encourage most of the other companies in the West African region and in the African region to grow, to list themselves in the stock market because it's very important for them. and. Uh, so what we have been recognized today, the recognition will go to other people. So I'm sure it's a very good one for everybody, not just for all of us. To many large institutional investors, size matters when picking a company to invest in. The Forbes ranking highlights some of the largest and most dynamic companies in West Africa, and given the increasing importance of markets like Nigeria to frontier market investors, the Forbes list brings to light how far African companies have come. Well, the size is extremely important because with the size should come liquidity. And for any investor, liquidity is extremely important. 
Um, one of the things that most African stock exchanges have suffered is the size is small and therefore there's not much depth. And because there's not much depth, the liquidity is pretty uh, low. And also more importantly, what you find is very, when there's no, in terms of size, it's very sensitive to sudden purchases or sudden sales. So if you find if a stock exchange is not big and a large investor sells, it tends to affect the market a great deal, as opposed to a stock exchange that is pretty large. So size is extremely important. Not that important. It's the return on investment in that market that matters. The size of the market gives it scale and means that many investors are there. But the first mobile initiative gives whoever is there first an advantage and it rips all the benefits. But eventually, markets move towards perfection and equilibrium. And so a lot of people are going to come in until people begin to exit. Looking at the trend in the last four years, the West African region has seen Nigeria's market cap drop by around 50%. That being the case, investors are left wondering what the future of West African exchanges will be. You know, today we all operate as individual autonomous uh, entities. There's an effort in the ECOWAS region to integrate. Uh, you already have the common passport. From a financial perspective, we're working on what we call WAMI, the West African Monetary Integration Effort. So don't be surprised if you see some kind of um, coming together to create a pool of liquidity that is more compelling and attractive for foreign uh, portfolio investors and global emerging and frontier market uh, fund uh, managers. I think I see an average, compounded average growth rate of about 30%. So while the market, uh, the economy is going at about 7 8%, maybe 9% in the next two, three years, the markets are going to be growing at about 30% average. In other words, you get 150% return over the next five years. So if you're at about 7 trillion now, you'll be at, uh, you know, 7 plus, you know, maybe around 17 trillion naira at that time. West Africa's exchanges have come a long way and the future looks bright. In a little over 50 years, we have seen these markets grow and thrive despite several challenges. This is building investors' confidence and providing them with the opportunity to join these growing markets.